Well, hello, pray and short and <laughs> hello, pray and share warriors. Oh my, it is a Monday. All day, it's Monday, or it has been Monday all day. I'll find a way to get that off. There we are. Okay, well. The words for today are love lifted me and I'm listening to the song right now that I am going to share with you what I wrote about it today, but I'm going to stop it so we can um, jump into some prayer first. I really like this song. I think I'm going to run it back. Okay. Alright. So we're going to talk about tonight. Love lifted me. You know, love being Jesus lifted me. Lifted me out of the miry clay. You know, lifted me out of the bondage of sin. You know, he lifts us up. He just lifts us up. So we're going to look up some scriptures. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read what I talked to God about today. And that is all that's on the agenda, I think, unless the Holy Spirit takes over, and then we'll see where we go from there. God, we just come to you, and we just thank you. We praise you, God, because you are on your throne, and you are in control, God. We can trust you, and we know that you sent us Jesus as love, God, as love and compassion, is forgiveness God we thank you for that we thank you that you are our creator our sustainer our provider our protector you are our shelter in the storm you are our everlasting father you are the great Jehovah you are the great I am God you are the righteous judge and you cannot be bought you cannot be threatened God and there is nothing that is hidden from you God, but yet you are compassionate and kind and loving and patient and faithful, God. You are trustworthy. All of your promises are kept and all of your prophecies will be fulfilled. Thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we just pray for the lost. We just cry out for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We pray for, um, we pray for all the disasters, all the shootings, all the things, all the riots, everything, God, that is not peace is not about Jesus, it's not about love and compassion. God, we just pray, we pray for you to infiltrate those places, God, for, for Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to infiltrate them. God, we pray for people that have lost loved ones, we just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, my friends. I don't know why one of my cameras is so annoying. It's like yellow. Um, I might start singing Hello Yellow. It's on my son's school video, Hello Yellow. Okay, well, we're just going to, maybe it will straighten out a little bit. I don't know. It seems like I moved my hand the other day and it did. But not now. Okay. So I'm going to turn my music back on. Such a pretty song. I don't know whether you as a child or you in your church sing Love Lifted Me. It's kind of more of an upbeat song. And I was going to look up the lyrics to it um, I may just do it still. Have the computer sitting here. What I'm listening to is, um, it 
I can't spell lyrics. It is a, um, I'm listening to a new version. Okay, this, this is the version that I woke up, I mean, that I grew up with. Not that I woke up with. Well, it was, you know, that's truth too, because this is the song that I was thinking about when God woke me up about four-ish this morning because I had an ankle cramp. The only way I can get rid of my ankle cramps are to walk. And so, um, these are the lyrics. I'm going to stop this and start it back in a minute because it's, it's, it's the same, but it's different. They, they really slowed their song down and they put some additional lyrics in it. I love this song. I think I would like to sing this song someday. Okay, so these are the lyrics to the song that I grew up singing. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling. In his blessed presence live, and ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, it merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to, to him belongs. And then the chorus again, love lifted me. It was really in these old, older songs. There's really no bridge or, you know, some of the things that you have with the newer praise and worship songs. You know, they usually have verses, chorus, and a bridge, and then a really explosive version of the chorus. But this is, um, I don't know how old this song is. We used to sing it when I was a little girl at church. I don't know, it doesn't say. I could probably look it, I should have looked it up under um, one of the programs that we use at our church. Okay, so love lifted me. So has there ever been a time where Jesus has just come in and lifted you out of the mire and the clay and the sin and the disgusting whatever you were stuck in? Has there ever been a time? Because I have had times in my life where Jesus had to lift me out of the mess that I had gotten myself into. No, I went too far. Okay, so this is what I wrote this morning on Facebook. This is the first time for me to hear this song and message. My words for today, love lifted me. So these are the words that I had on my mind when I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning. And I wrote them down on a piece of paper so I wouldn't forget them. These are simple words, but as I sit here and listen to these lyrics, I'm brought back to my childhood. And all the times in my life that Jesus, the love, lifted me up and out of what I was stuck in. I think of all the stories in the New Testament where Jesus lifted people out of what they were doing. He called his apostles out of their lives too, uh, out of their lives to follow him. What if they would have said no? You know, have you ever thought about what if the apostles would have gone and now, I don't want to follow you today. You know, and some of them did say, and they didn't go with them. They said, well, let me bury my mother or let me bury my parents and then I'll come. Jesus wants an immediate response and he wants us to follow him. And so if they hadn't followed him, we probably wouldn't have the New Testament, you know, that tells us a lot about what Jesus did that shows us the love that lifted people out of either their sin or their sickness or whatever, out of death. For Lazarus, you know, he lifted Lazarus out of death. So, um, I'm glad they said yes. 
We all come to forks in the road where we have to decide which path to take. Mine happened in 1991. It would have been so easy to go back to what I knew, but I chose the path that I knew with Jesus from my childhood. I chose this path and lifestyle for my innocent daughter that was six. I wanted her childhood to be in church like mine was, with Sunday school and VBS. It has been a journey of traveling in the valley up enormous mountains, but Jesus is always there. Sometimes I strayed away, but not, not for long. Sometimes he had to leave the 99 to come find me in the bog and lift me out. His love never wavers, changes or ends. Let Jesus lift you up today. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. God's plan and purpose will amaze you. Choose the path with Jesus. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16, 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so that's what I wrote today on Facebook. And uh, as I was reading that, I was going, oh, I wish I could have found some more stories. I did find one. I found one um, in Matthew 14. So we're going to start out with that. Hey, my friend Josie. I'm waving at you. Okay, so Matthew 14 says this. Matthew 14, I'm just going to read all of it. Um, I'm just going to read all of it. I have a hard time knowing where to start and where to end. I have my giant cup of water. Okay, so at that time, Herod the Tetri Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works uh, do show forth themselves in him. So Herod, Herod, I don't know whether this is the same Herod that beheaded John the Baptist, but he thought that John the Baptist had risen from the dead. Uh, for Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, this is the same one, because this is the same story. But when um, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John, John Baptist's, John the Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it be given her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought in a charger, and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came, and took up the body, and buried it, and went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a deeper place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. You know, you have to remember, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. You know, you go back to the first of Matthew where it's talking about um, Mary and I think her cousin Elizabeth was her name. 
Anyway, uh, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. He lifted their sick up out of their sickness. He healed them. You know, love lifted me. Love lifted them that day. Lifted those sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place. And the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. Then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude and they did all eat and were filled and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full and they that had eaten were about five thousand men beside women and children so that was a great multitude of people because it was more than 5,000. That's just the men. I, I would be willing to bet that every man that was old enough to be married had a wife there. And um, everyone that had a wife probably had kids there too. So there, I mean, that was way more than 5,000. Maybe double you know, maybe double, I don't know. Anyway, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus... But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. So Peter actually walked on the water. Um... To go to Jesus, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And so, just like us, you know, when, uh, when we're in a storm and we're looking around and we're looking at all the circumstances, or we're standing at the bottom of a mountain and we're looking up and it is just so, so big, we have no idea how we're going to make it to the top. We take our focus off of Jesus too. Jesus knows how we're going to make it to the top. And Jesus knows that if we keep our eyes on him, we can walk on water too. But we have to have that faith. We have to have that faith. And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they were in the ship came, they that were in the ship came and worshiped him saying, of a truth thou art the son of God. So because they saw him, I mean, they've seen him do a lot of things. So, I don't know. Their faith, like our faith, wavers from time to time. 
And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of the place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him as they might only touch the hem of his garment and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. See, he didn't even have to say anything to them. He had such power in his body that even his garment healed the disease. So even touching his garment lifted them up out of that disease into wholeness, into uh, healing. That is miraculous. So I think we're going to, there's so much, you know, even Matthew 15. But I think we're going to look up some more scriptures from there. I just wanted to read all of Matthew 14. Because I wanted to talk about that Jesus lifted Peter up out of the ocean. You know, out of the storm. He lifted him up out of the storm. So, hey, my friend Josie. My day was great. I got stuff done today. And uh, I want to get more stuff done tomorrow. But I'm about tired, too. I'm about tired from doing stuff. Okay, so let's move on to, uh, did number these today. Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Jesus said unto, the, unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So this is how we are to love. We are to love God with all that we have. Everything that we have. And we're to love others. You know, there sure is a lot of hate going on right now. I just, um, I don't know. There's just some things that I will not listen to because I'm not going to buy into that. I don't hate anyone, and I'm not going to buy into the hatefulness that is portrayed in this world right now and the the choosing sides and all the all of that. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I am going to side with God's Word all the time. I'm going to side with truth all the time. But in that truth, it tells me not to hate people, to love everyone, to love my neighbor as I love myself. And so that means that we need to love everyone and realize that God is the one that created everyone. We did not. God is the one that chose people's race. God is the one that chose people's gender. God is the one that chose people's um, families. We didn't. We don't get to choose any of that. That's not our choice. That's God's. He chooses that. He chooses that. He chooses all three of those things so that in obedience to Him, He can fulfill His plan and purpose in our lives. The problem with people that are not happy with the choices that God chose for them is that they're not following his ways. They're not ever going to be happy not following his ways. Okay, it sounds like the Holy Spirit took over for a little while. Okay, so we are to love people. And some people are harder to love than others, but we are still to love them and respect them and to respect authority too. We are called as God's children to respect authority. That doesn't mean to argue with authority. That means to do what they're asking you to do. Okay, so let's move on to John 14, 6 that talks about Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. 
Uh, oh, I'm in Luke. You know what? It really helps if you get in the right book. It really helps. I have found that. I've found that if you're in the wrong book, but you're on the right verse, it is not very helpful. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to read down to 7. So, John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may also, ye, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, in the way ye know. And Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. And Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth, sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the father and how sayest thou then show us the father believe thou not that i am in the father and the father in me the words that i speak unto you i speak not of myself but the father that dwelleth in me he doeth the works believe me that i am in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I shall, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but he know, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. So while I was reading that, I was thinking about Thessalonians. That love is going to lift us out of this world. So I think I'm going to finish with that if I can find it. But um, let me see where we are here. I think I'm going to skip that one. Okay, 1 Corinthians 13. Okay, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now abideth faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Follow after love and desire spiritual gifts but rather than ye may prophesy. Um, this is 1 Corinthians 14. For he that speaketh is in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation in comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Okay. <clears throat> I think I think that's enough. 
of reading that. Okay, let's see where we are now. Okay, 1 John 4, 16. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, God love his brother also. He who loveth God, love his brother also. Okay, so again, more about love. We have to love God, and then we have to love people, too. And uh, we need to share Jesus. That's uh, on YouTube. That's my, I don't have a picture of myself. I have an emblem that says, love God, love people, share Jesus. Okay, so let's see if I can find this Thessalonians, which will talk about Jesus coming and lifting us out of this crazy world that we live in. I have to see if I can find it. Oh, there we are. This is one of my... I'm just going to read all of First Thessalonians 4. Yeah. Okay, furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments... I'll turn my music off. Oh, there it is. I'm all go. I'm going to turn it back on. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of con concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God, that no God, that no go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but to holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given us his Holy Spirit, but as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing but i would not have you to be ignorant brethren considering them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep.
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So Jesus is going to come, and he is going to lift us out of here. And uh, we're going to be with Jesus forever. So I think that's the best part of love lifted me, is that Jesus loves us, and he is going to come. And he is going to get us out of this crazy place. I was looking to see if there was anything else about this. I'm not sure if I know where this is. I'm not sure where it talks about leaving the 99 to get the 1. Oh, my fan's not plugged in. I'm like, why is it my fan running? Okay. I don't see it in here. I know it's, I don't think it's right here. I do like what all, I love John 10, what it talks about the, the shepherd and the sheep. I love it, but I don't think this is where it talks about leaving the 99 and going after the one, which was kind of what I was looking for. If anybody knows, um, put it in the comments, and maybe I'll read it another night, but Jesus does leave, well, I guess I could Google it. That's one good thing about having a computer here is you can just like Google things and get information. Matthew 18, Matthew 18, sorry, I guess maybe I should have been more prepared, but I had a pretty action-packed day today, um, 18, 12 through 14, um, I love this story, and I love the song Reckless Love that talks about this, okay, for the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety-nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep, than of the ninety-nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Okay. Well, I think that's all about the sheep, but that kind of, um, that while I was reading all those other scriptures, that story came to mind. Because I think as Christians, at one time, we were all that one sheep. We were all that one sheep that was not, that went astray, <laughs> that walked away from Jesus and said, hey, I got this thing. I got this thing called life. I can handle it. 
I can do all this on my own. But then we get out there on our own, all by ourselves. And maybe we stumble into a muddy, you know, uh, muddy, some, like a muddy, a muddy puddle of clay and we can't get out, you know, and we're stuck. We're stuck and we can't get out. And Jesus comes to find us and lifts us out, you know, so love lifted me. Love lifted me out of that miry clay. Did he lift you out of that miry clay? I know he lifted me out. I know there was a time where I could have gone a different direction, but I chose not to. I chose to stay on the path with Jesus and not to go do what I knew. I, I knew. I knew the other direction. I knew it quite well. Um, but I chose a different path, and I'm so thankful that I did. And I believe because I had several different circumstances, um, and that's why. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful that God somehow had a plan and a purpose for me. I mean, He has a plan and purpose for all of us, but... We're never going to know it if we don't want to follow Jesus, if we don't want to accept Jesus as our Savior and let him lift us out of that miry clay, let him lift us out of that sin, let him break the chains of the bondage that we're in, then um, we're not going to know what that plan and purpose is. It may be spectacular. I mean, we never know. We never know. Okay, well, I'm going to read what um, God and I talked about. Now I'm listening to All Hail, King Jesus. I love that song. Hail, not not the hot place. Hail, you know, H-A-I-L. Okay, good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, child. New opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new beautiful day, child. Enjoy it, child. Drink in the beauty of my creation. It was a beautiful day today as I drove along. It was really pretty. All the rain has made everything really green and vibrant. And um, it really is pretty. All the little wildflowers in the ditches. Okay, so I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, of new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for another new beautiful day. Excuse me. I will drink in the beauty of your creation. Thank you for yesterday and for sending a sweet couple to help us. Please let my car start today. I'm having trouble with my car starting, but it's... It's our own fault. We went and decided to do a picnic. We went to Sonic and we went to do a picnic. And instead of getting out of our car like normal people do, we just sat in our car and ate in the shade. Um, and my battery ran down. I guess eventually I'm going to have to get another battery. I'm kind of praying for a, not a brand new car. I do not want a payment, but a newer car. A newer, more dependable car. Okay. So, um, so anyway, I we were sitting there, and I was like, what are we going to do? Because we weren't at Heritage Park, you know, which isn't far from our house. One of us could have walked home and gotten Ricky's pickup, but we were at the park over there. We were at the soccer field park over there by the expo center so it's a little far walk to walk home and get a vehicle but this very nice couple came along and they jumped my car off they were very nice i'm thanking god for them and so then i prayed that my car would start and it did start today so praise jesus uh help me to get done what i need to get done god i did get done what i needed to get done today um, so praise Jesus again. And he said, Child, be aware of what is going on, but learn the song 
have asked you to sing, so I'm going to sing on Sunday. I haven't sang in over a year, um, but I'm going to sing I Can Only Imagine. Um, I'm going to have to learn it. I thought I knew it until I started trying to figure out whether I knew the lyrics, and I don't. But anyway. Um... He's told me to start working on it today, so today's not over. I guess I can start. I actually did listen to it this morning, but it's not in a good key for me. I'm going to have to find a lady's key. I don't do men's keys very well. Um, I said, okay, God, I will. Help me to focus on you. Child, what I have to say is most important. I reminded you that your job is to share, and my job is to change. And that is what he reminded me of in the middle of the night with plus uh, love lifted me. He, you know, that my job is to share, and his job is to change hearts. Um... Only I know all hearts and minds, and who will allow Jesus to lift them up, lift them out of their bondage of sin. Child, blatant sin, blasphemy of me, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is the greatest problem in all corruption and deception that goes with sin and following after the evil one, too. As you heard yesterday, I will... I will bring evil to a decreed end in my perfect will and timing. My plans and purposes of my children and mankind will be fulfilled to perfection. Do your job that I have called you to, and I will do the rest. Share love and compassion with others. Testify to my goodness and encourage others too. Be obedient, child, above all things. And I said, uh, sorry I missed sharing last night, God. Sorry I did not make good food choices either. Forgive me, God, please. Thank you for meeting with me today, God. Please order my steps today and help me to get done what I need to get done. And praise Jesus, I got done what I needed to get done. You know, when I pray for God to order my steps, my day just falls into place. It is so amazing. I highly recommend that, just to say, God, please order my steps today. Um, okay. Thank you that my daughter had fun and got home safely. Please keep all my blessings safe, including Seth and I today. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to your calling, child, and keep your focus on Jesus. Keep walking with him. The reunion is soon, child, so be ready. Keep looking up, child. The reunion will be so awesome to have you all here in the land of beauty, free and safe, in perfect peace forever. And I said, Maranatha, God. I wanted to say amen right there because amen, I'm ready. I'm ready for that. Especially since every day I wake up and there's something else crazy going on and there's another shooting and there's more people out there Rioting. They're not protesting if they're burning things and hurting people. That's not really a protest. Um, anyway. But until Jesus comes, our job is to share God's truth and to share the gospel. No, I don't know what that is. I'll have to look at it later. Somebody sent me something. I'll have to look at it later. So, it is time. I have so many choices now of sharing the gospel since I've found some more things. 
It's like, I don't know what to do. Here's a faith visit outline of how to share the gospel. Um, I think I want to do the bracelet, though. I think I want to do the bracelet. Okay. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1, 16. So we need not be ashamed of the gospel. You know, we should be excited about the gospel because um, it is a gift. It is a gift from God that Jesus sent his son to die for us. That none of us really deserve the sacrifice that Jesus was willing to do on the cross for us. But, you know, God sent him because he loves us. So the gold color represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. So they're one. Okay, and then we have the question mark with the dark. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death and separation from God forever. So the first question mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? Well, then we have the red. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So because Jesus came and uh, paid the penalty for our sin, uh, we can have eternal life. We don't have to be separated from God. So then you have the white in the question mark. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash away our sins? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So the question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? So if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior, then repeat this prayer after me and I will leave some space so you'll, have, you'll be able to do that. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you, re you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins.
I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so now we move to the green color. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. Okay, so we have the heart. We already talked about this today. This is perfect. This is one of our scriptures. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Love God, love people. And we already talked about that tonight. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. Pray to God constantly. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with him. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. Whew, that's powerful. So if you invited Jesus to be your savior tonight, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his son. The angels in heaven are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And when Jesus comes, and he's going to come, I don't know what day, what hour. Only God knows that. Jesus doesn't even know that. It says in Scripture that Jesus doesn't even know that. So when God gets here, I mean when Jesus comes, we will know. And we will go and live with him forever in the most perfect, awesome, wonderful place that we can only imagine because we have never been there. I, I've seen glimpses and I've seen pictures, but I really don't think that anything that we've seen is going to measure up to what we're going to experience. And some of our church family, we've had church family that they're with Jesus now, so they're experiencing the best part of Revelation. So, we will have our turn. We'll have our turn someday, Josie. <laughs> I want to go in the rapture. I want to see what Jesus looks like in the clouds. But, again, God gives us an arrival date gives us the departure date and the time in between is what we do with our lives and so I don't know I want to depart when Jesus comes but I don't know okay well I think that I am going to pray and go take care of my son because I'm the only adult in the house right now so I am adulting on my own tonight until my husband gets home. But I left Seth with something, three hours of something, but I'm not gonna stay on here for three hours. Okay, well let's go ahead and pray. Um, Josie, do you have any prayer requests? I don't know whether. Oh, I love this song. Um, Zion. 
by Aaron Schust. I love this song. So super awesome. Okay. Well, I am going to pray. I will pray for Josie and her family. I will pray for her job, her co workers. I will pray for Mr. Mike and the boys. I'm going to pray for our youth. I'm going to pray for youth camp. I made a commitment to pray for youth camp. Um, anyway, I'm going to pray for other things when I jump in there and start praying. God, we just thank you, God. We thank you that you sent Jesus so that Jesus could be the love that lifts us out and lifts us up out of the messes that we get in, God. We are so thankful. We are thankful that you are our shelter in our storm, our shelter in the storm, that you are our strength and our refuge, God. We thank you for that. We thank you for creating us for providing for us, for protecting us. We thank you for your blessings. We even thank you for unanswered prayers that looking back now, we're so thankful that you did not answer them the way we wanted you to. God, we just thank you for Jesus that he does lead the way for us. And when things look impossible, there's always a way. There's always a way up that mountain God, I pray for Josie and her family, for her brothers, for her sisters, for their families, God, for her children, for their families. I pray for blessings. I pray for protection. I pray for provision, God. I just pray that they would be drawn closer and closer to you during this time and that, God, you would be very real in their lives. And also, I pray for Josie as she works and drives back and forth. Please protect her, God. Also, pray for Mr. Mike as he um, and the boys that are staying with him, God. We just pray for blessings and protection. And we pray for provision, God. We just pray that you would be very close to him, that he would feel your presence, God. That you would lead and guide him as he leads and guides these young men. God, we just pray for the youth. We pray for camp that's coming up. God, we just pray that you would start preparing their hearts for what you want to teach them now and that you would prepare us as leaders also, that you would prepare our hearts, that you would give us the guidance and wisdom that we need when we get in the situations at camp, God. We just pray also for uh, our fundraiser coming up this Sunday, that we would be able to raise funds so that we can, uh, we can pay for these kids that want to go to camp. We also pray God for, um, we pray for this concert that we want to go to, God, in Fort Worth. We just pray for your anointing in that and that. You would just help us to get all the details in order for that also on the 8th and that you would be with us and that you would uh, protect us as we go and as we come back. God, we just thank you because you do surround us with your angels of protection many times, times that we don't even see, God. We thank you for um, all your many blessings, God. I just pray for anybody that watches this, God, that you would touch their hearts. That if they have any doubt that you are real, God, that you would be real to them. And that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. I love this song. God, help me to be. Help me to be who you want me to be, God. Help me to see the way things the way you want me to see. Help me to love people the way that you want me to love people. Help us all on here to be the children that make you smile. God, keep us on this narrow path with Jesus. Keep us in the light and keep us walking in the truth. Help us to walk in righteousness, God, knowing that you are the righteous judge that cannot be bought, cannot be threatened. God, that nothing is hidden from you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Okay. All right, I think I got everyone. Did I miss anybody? I love this song. God Help Me to Be by Cloverton. Such a good song. I don't know what list I'm listening to tonight, but it's really good. It may be my tonight list. Yeah, it is. It's my tonight list. I guess I added some. Okay, well, uh, Pray and Share Warriors and my friend Josie, I love you. Have a good day. Have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow. And uh, much love. I'm going to go ahead and get off of here and go feed my child. Much love and cyber hugs. Until I see you, good night.